Professor Brian Brown's research shows that vulnerability fosters good emotional and mental health. It is a sign of courage. We become more resilient and brave when we embrace who we truly are and what we are feeling. The Vulnerable Scientist Podcast is a space for scientists to tell their honest and authentic stories. I am your host, Saranya Kerry, who happens to be a scientist, informal science communicator, and I help scientists create personal websites. If you want to support this show, go to www.patreon.com slash the vulnerable scientist. You can also follow this podcast on all social media platforms at TV Scientist Pod. Okay, yeah. great. Um, apart from this, all this that we've been talking about, what else do you do uh, that has nothing to do with your career of science? Mm-hmm. Or That's this, a very good question. Yeah, mm-hmm. Or anything. Mm-hmm. Or business, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mm, I I do many. Um, I, yeah, I do so many things. I, I'm, I'm interested in so many things. So mm. number one, I would say, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in, and I think it's important, uh, wealth creation and, and progressing financially. And I'm really excited about this because I think where I grew up, it wasn't, it's not a space for women. Like you are still supposed to, you know, study to some, I mean, the university actually even stretching it too far where mm. I come from. Mm. You just study to somewhere, some college and wait for some guy who is financially stable to marry you and support you mm-hmm. and you live happily ever after. Uh, I feel like that's the general, yeah. kind of general, uh, like as, a, as a woman, uh, I feel like I, especially when I, when I was growing up, I didn't feel like, uh, at least compared to my brothers, like there was that expectation for me to progress or to build myself wealth-wise and mm-hmm. finance-wise. And now I'm embracing that. And I know it's important as a, as a, as a woman to explore ways to grow financially and wealth wise and like I mentioned we 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 try and exploring some business business opportunities to mm-hmm. to solve problems and and make and make money right uh, with some of my friends so that's something that I I do and I'm I'm, I'm passionate about that or mm-hmm. it's an interest of mine mm-hmm. uh, solving problems number 2 I um, also most importantly I like motivating, inspiring, because I was once there and I remember so many times we had ladies who came to our school to speak to us about importance of education, mm. importance of building yourself and exploring opportunities. And they made an impact. I still remember what they were wearing, how they were talking. Mm. And I was like, I want to be like them one day. Mm. And so knowing that I do when I, whenever I'm in Kenya or even when I'm not in Kenya, we do Zoom the inspirational talk sometimes. So there is an organization that I run uh, mm. called ILU, I-L-W. I'm running mm. with some of my friends and we, we do that. We do inspire, inspire, empower, encourage. And we are, we actually, there is a, what excites me the most of, uh, of this social impact or ILU is the student exchange program that we are launching. Mm. It's coming soon and I think people will, will know about it. We, because personally, the reason why I'm here is because I once got a chance to go to Norway in 2013 mm. and it opened up my mind and I knew there was a big world. Before that, mm. I used to think Nairobi was the biggest city in the world mm. until I got to Oslo and I was like, mm, there is a there is another world. And and I never settled after that. Like I, I wanted to go out of Kenya, explore and whatnot. So anyway, we are thinking of within East Africa, because we don't need a passport or visas to travel be- with, within countries. East Africa, Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda. And we were asking ourselves, why can't we have a st- student exchange program where we, we fetch some students from Kenya, some university in Kenya. We mm. take them for two weeks. It doesn't have to be for credit. It mm. could just be for cultural and just for them to cross the border. Mm. And we and we have a very we have a vast network of our friends who who are in those countries. And we we just summon them. We tell them, hey, we are bringing some students from Kenya. You host them in Dar Salaam mm. and show them around. Mm. Take them to some classes. After two weeks, they come back home. Mm. And we do the same. We do this reverse. And mm. we do the same next year. We go to mm. Makerere. Wow. And, and I, I know there is just something about crossing your country's borders mm. that changes Opens how you your mind. think. Yes. So that's, I'm really excited about that. So that's why I do also part-time uh, under ILU. Mm. 
-hmm. empowering and unleashing, helping students unleash their full potential in education. That's what we say. (laughs) And number three, I love uh, sports and I play soccer. I still do. I Mm. play for a team here in the U.S. It's called... Um, in, in, in the state where I am, Massachusetts. Mm. Mm. I, I play for a team that is playing in the Eastern Massachusetts Division One League. So you wow. can imagine it's very intense. And we, we do practice like every... We practice at least twice and we play twice. You, still, you still play the same numbers? I still play, yes. I play number seven. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, yeah, that's pretty much the three major things that I do like doing when I'm not researching. Is there anything that you'd like to talk about that I haven't asked? <laughs> I, I, I feel like we've, I, I feel like we've exhausted mm. and I, I've expounded as much as, uh, as I could. And mm. I think we've touched on major, major things. And I've, I've spoken about things that are so close to my heart mm. and I think helped me through my academic career. Yeah, so that I think I think we have um, we've done that. The question I have to ask is: Have you um, talked about your experiences? Because I'm open to interviewing you in your own podcast. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> there have been attempts. There have been attempts okay. before, but it, it just don't work really. Um, I would love mm-hmm. that. I would love that. No, right. you let me know when you are ready. Because I think you have a, a very strong story, encouraging, inspiring story. And okay. you're doing, most importantly, like I said, you're doing amazing work. Okay, thanks. Thanks for, thanks for saying that. Thanks for thinking about that. that that's, that's really <laughs> nice. <laughs> There's something you, you mentioned. Um, yeah. First book, second book. I didn't get that. You have oh, first book? I have two books. I have mm. two books. Mm. Can you tell more about your books uh, and where people can get them? All right. The the first book is called The Bold Dream. Mm -hmm. And I co-authored with a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And we were, we we just set out to write our stories of how we grew up. We both, he went to Kiricho High Mm -hmm. and we we met at the University of Oxford. Mm -hmm. And so we had weird, weird we had um, what's the name? Similarities. We mm. have the same surname. We are mm. not related. We mm. are not natives. Mm-hmm. And then we went to schools, uh, neighboring schools. Masagalton, mm. Masagal. I mean, Kikelian and Kericho are like pretty much same close place. Mm. And as, especially when you look at when you come out of Kenya and you look back, you look back from outside Kenya. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So we decided to, and he's also doing pretty well, very well actually. A very inspiring uh, gentleman. Mm. He's now working for the World Bank. He's a doctor. Mm-hmm. And we we just set out to write our stories. And we were hoping that our stories of mm. small beginnings, academic-wise, mm. mm. might inspire someone, some student who is doubting themselves because of the school they went to mm. or because of their home area, etc. Mm. So that's pretty much what the book is about. And people can get it from Amazon. Or if you just go to Google, and you say the bold dream, and you can write my name uh, or his name. So his name is Elisha Nyatic. Mm. I'm Gladys Nyatic. So if you write the bold dream and then maybe a comma and then and then Gladys Nyatic or Elisha Nyatic, it will pop up. And I think Google will give you options to purchase. Amazon is, I think, on top of the list. But mm. depending on where you are, you could get some other options. Mm. And the second book, uh, I this one I, co- I authored alone, uh, The PhD Journey. And I was just looking back, like I mentioned, to 12, 2014 when I was super overwhelmed by the idea that I was about to start my PhD at the University of Oxford. And I, at some point, I, want, I wanted to turn it down because I didn't believe in myself. Hmm. I, had not met, I had not met a woman actually with a PhD, let alone a PhD in engineering. What? And I was 24. Like oh I was 24 God. years and I was planning to do a PhD. And it's my boyfriend who told me, you know what, you go, you've gotten a, a prestigious scholarship, you're going to be at the University of Oxford, mm. you just go. If it's if if if, if um the push come to a show and and you can't handle the thing, you can convert it to a master's in one year, mm. and that's how I did. So I went with the with, in in my mind, knowing that 
this thing I don't think I can you. handle it. Mm. And I'm gonna convert it to a master's because I don't think I can handle it. And then one year turned to two years to three years to four years, and in four years I had my PhD. So I was just looking back and saying, Hey, you actually have what it takes to mm. to, to do this thing if you wanna do it. I mean it's tortures. The the journey is it has a lot of twists, mm. but it's it's hackable. You can hack it. Mm. And and other stories and other pieces of advice, like mm. I mentioned. Mm. So that's it's called the PhD journey. Mm-hmm. Strategies for enrolling, thriving, and excelling in a PhD. You can do the same thing, uh, and, and maybe you could share. I will give you links. I think I've given you links. You can mm-hmm. share, mm-hmm. but also you could just go to Google or whatever internet you use. Mm-hmm. Um, search search the the PhD journey, mm-hmm. and um, and write a Gladys message. I think it will pop up, and you will get like options depending on where you are options mm. of where you can purchase so there is a, a hard copy or hard, a paperback mm. and uh ebook if you prefer it's been uh, over two hours of conversation and i'm wondering how <laughs> do you feel after having this conversation oh it's i it, uh, i do like sitting down and going back the memory lane mm. like when i was writing the book i like most of the memories that i'd forgotten came back mm. and so i just to say I really appreciate because I and and I hope the stories and the conversation that we had I hope someone will pick one or two things from it so I'm, I'm grateful I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity to converse about this thanks for coming to this podcast and sharing your story very vulnerably thank you for having me and you're doing an amazing job Do you want to learn about the strategies for enrolling, thriving, and excelling in a PhD program? Dr. Gladys Ngetich has written a book on the PhD journey with lessons from various PhD students across the globe and from her lessons as an ex-Oxford PhD student. Dr. Gladys is now a postdoc researcher at MIT. For you to get a chance to get a free book, post your favorite podcast episode of the Vulnerable Scientist podcast on any social media account and tag the Vulnerable Scientist social media account with the hashtag the Vulnerable Scientist book giveaway. You can now pre order the book on Amazon. Or as an ebook on Kindle Cobalt Dahlia ETC. You can get more information on this book on www.gladischepkirui.com/books. Mm-hmm.